Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday morning's meditation seminar. 
Let's suspend our minds just a little teeny bit. And free awareness to become aware of its own self. Suspending the mind. Focusing on awareness, within awareness. <coughs> Having established ourselves even a little bit in awareness, we'll then extend awareness, that field through our body, that we experience the pervasiveness. So we'll extend all the way down, all the way up, awakening the centers. Awareness actually awakens awareness. Intensifying. Having established ourselves in the body, we'll extend to the immediacy of our situation, which is the true mandala. That's us. So we'll extend to each other, friends on the internet. Inside to inside, directly, unmediated. As Dr. Rinpoche, great social mass, and so often say, <clears throat> extension is the secret. As we expand our perception of the field, will extend to the generational field, the ancestors of which you and I are expressions of. The mothers and the fathers, of the mothers and the fathers. So we'll extend to them. <clears throat> and these traditions, the separation between living here and being on the other side of the veil is very, very thin. So we extend in mutual support. Then we'll extend to the great yogis and holy people and gurus we've had the fortune of meeting in <clears throat> the past couple of weeks. Many of us have met many, huh? Amma, extend to her. The Dalai Lama and the many monks who were with him, performing the Kala Chakra, time as the expression of compassion. Kramapa, Lamanurla, then we extend to all the various traditions we participate in, <clears throat> and traditions are themselves fields of knowledge, information and light articulated over the centuries. Nowadays, with geography being so tiny, information so available, just like this past week, many, many initiations are possible for everyone. Democracy, tribal boundaries thinning, doorways not so difficult to enter, so they mix in our bodies. 
and become universal people. And then we'll extend to that dimension, some Bogakaya, archetypical, the deities and devas, dakinis, the goddesses, gods, those manifestations, those qualities of primordial awareness, personified, symbolized. So we'll extend to the Divine Mother this morning in her many forms. <clears throat> and then you can just rest in the meditative state. I'm going to actually give a practice in, of uh, Jetsam Troma, the Dark Mother. And it's considered a practice that opens the door of direct perception. As we do this also, a wonderful friend of the center uh, died last week. He was a really great, great human being. He was a truly a compassionate bo person, bodhisattva, in the most naturalistic way. His name was Mark Lawrence. He was a very great person. So I'll extend to him. Because the light supports the light. So this morning, I'm going to be actually reading a text. And this is a text, a practice of invoking the Dakini. In Vajrayana, there are various Dakini practices, goddess practices. And these practices are stories or mythic invocations that bring one into the experience of the Dakini, or better said, the archetypical dimensions of the awareness field into experience, to our own experience, of the very essential nature of awareness. The Dakini is a metaphor, symbol, personification of direct perception, knowingness, Gnosis, wisdom gnosis. And these texts, which are not literal, but are evocative in their symbolic power, and bring forth within you and me, inform within you what they signify, what they symbolize. Of course, everything is a method, and these invocations, which are the expressions of the singular field of transmission, bringing forth from within our experience of innate awareness with its wonderful and magical forces. These texts bring forth the various dimensions of your experiential awareness, which for the Vajrayana is ultimately cosmological, the anima mystic, the anima psyche. The psyche is essentially mystical, in its nature, and it's essentially oneness. As Jung once said, you do not simply have a psyche, but you live in psyche. The world is psyche. The universe is psyche. Anima, mystic. For our purposes, the true unconscious is primordial awareness. As the primordial awareness, consciousness, is for so, so, so many people experientially unconscious. The unconscious is primordial awareness is very real and it's multidimensional. The reality is manifested both as the symbolic dimension, Sambhogakaya dimension, which is just luminous for textual elements, and is also manifested as the Mnemonikaya dimension. That's the world of us, desire, human flesh. Dogs, people, houses, cars. The symbolic is the medium of reality that brings forth the experiential awareness in its multidimensionality and its infinite horizons. The symbolic arises out of the transitional space of awareness. 
It's also called the samadhi of symbols, the samadhi of sound, the samadhi of the vibrations. The archetypical dimensions are not consciously experienced if we're located in our mind alone, or even if we're located only in the body, the wordless body, the body without language or understanding. When we can enter that intermediate area of awareness, of awareness, then that dimension easily opens up to us in its innermost essence. So as I read this text, don't you kind of rest in and, and don't let your mind get caught on, on the meaning of a particular symbol. Emoho. In order to actualize the beloved Dakini Saraswati, she who brings forth the radiance of passionate joy, sublime joy, Co-emergent joy. I invoke the bodhicitta to become what I am. Oma hung bodhicitta, ma sukha yana datua. Oma hung bodhicitta, the great compassion. Ma sukha, which is the great sweetness. Yana, which is direct perception. Datua, in every situation. Da hung bam ho. Then there's an invocative mantra, Hung Hung Yam Kam Sum Kem Drung. From the letter E, <coughs> excuse me, from the letter E comes a triangular source of all the dharmas, all the phenomena. Having the nature of spaciousness, its top is wide, wide open like the sky, and its fine tip points downward. In the center of this triangle, Within the seer as a palace or a place or locatedness, having the nature of spontaneous presence. Trotidakini, the dark mother. Hung Ho, the palace is complete in all its inner and outer characteristics. There is the deity's seat. There's, there is the form of the only mother, the trauma, the dark mother, the dark luminous light, the feminine embodiment of intense compassion, which is both beneficent and fierce. She is the darkest blue, fierce, and magnificent luminousness. A crown chakra is adorned with the head of a grunting pig, symbolizing stupidity. She has one face and two arms, and she's so fierce and so powerful. Luminous energy, luminous, shining darkness. She is a warrior and manifests this uncanny laughter, both out loud and within you. Her two hands hold a hooked knife for cutting through delusion and a skull cap filled with blood, filled with its life force, filled with the vital essence, the life essence, the Shakti. A trident rests in the crook of her arm, Shiva's ornament. She's in oneness with him. She's in a dancing posture, one leg extended, and the other leg bent. And she stands within this mass of raging fire, blazing, blazing, blazing.
from the letters Hong Hong Harinisa appears the invocation of our retinue of the Dakinis of the four directions. White as water, yellow as earth, red as fire, green as air. They're most subtle and most intense. These are the elements self-arising and manifesting the worlds. Vajraratna Padma Karma Buddha Vajravahari Hung Ho That's a salutation to her. Hung Ho From the invisible celestial land of Kachara Mother Troma the soul mother and the Dakini of the great compassion surrounded by the Dakinis of the four families. Kachara is a heavenly realm, heavenly dimension, Sambhogakaya in nature, Dakini realm, and the Kachara Mudra. Kachara Mudra is where your tongue touches the palate and helps open the nectarian state. The inner palate that opens the door to nectarian, nectarian states. The womb of the Shakti. I invoke you Please come to this place within us. Remaining in the sun, moon, and lotus, these seats, and empower us, your devoted sons and daughters, I embrace you with love and the devotion of oneness. Divine Dakini, in and through, your creative compassion and purest love transform my body, speech, and mind into Kadik, the great purity of awareness. Awakened awareness and awakened phenomena. By embracing you, I become you. You are awareness itself. Stainless space unbound. Luminous darkness. Vajravahari Tordikale Maharanisa City Hung. Then another mantra. Namo Vajrakumari, Namo Troti Kumari Hung. Vajrakumari means unborn, undying youthfulness. So one practices awareness, this, the invocation of youthfulness is present, indestructible, undying, the deathless state. From the letters, Oma Hung, within my heart center, light radiates and touches the outer and inner circumstances. From the letters, Oma Hung, within my heart, the Hedayam, light radiates and touches the outer and inner circumstances. And the sixteen Dakinis bring forth their own divine substance and sings their own melody and experiencing the bliss of the substances that they bring forth into the world and into my body. These offerings, these manifestations, these substances are the essence of the root en energies, the root energies of elemental light. By combining these offerings, these activities, in this way I, the practitioner, will easily receive the sublime 
in ordinary cities. The Dakinis, using passionate melodies and the natural Dakini sign language and writing the secret language on those they love, these offerings are made to the Dakinis. Inside a skull cup is the brilliant, luminous, quintessence of Amrita, innate bliss, liquid light. The rakta, the blood, in the skull cup contains ripples and vortexes, chi, energy, swirling, vortexing. The precious, sublime container holds the bodhicitta. This liquid drops, drops, heart drops of the Dharmakaya. Liquid, light, compassion. And that is the true sacred substance. The Amrita portions have many flavors, such as sour, bitter, and sweet. These unsurpassable essential substances are offered to the Great Mother, Troma, the goddess of fierce and intense compassion, the light of her own awareness. They are offered to bring forth the white goddess, the body emanations of great bliss. Masuka. They are offered to bring forth the red goddess, the speech emanations of sound, syllables. They are offered to bring forth the awareness field, emanations of Sangwayeshe, secret, timeless, awareness, wisdom, gnosis. They are offered to bring forth the yellow goddess of the qualities of accomplishment, completion. They are offered to the green goddess who completes compassionate activities. They are offered to the oceans of emanations of the mother and the sister Dakinis, oceans of radiant light, scintillate. I ask you to consider me accepting this offering with love and affection. I invoke you to bestow the ultimate realization of unsurpassable Sangwayeshe, timeless awareness in time, beyond time, holding time. the gift of enjoying the companionship of the Dakinis. Then there's this little Dakini shout, Ka Ka Kahi Kahi. The offering of Amrita, bliss, the secret mantra, Hung, the unsurpassable supreme Amrita, the drops, is the substance that brings forth unbound bliss, Masuka. I offer this to the host of the mother and sister Dakinis. Please accept this and bestow the empowerment and cities of this action.
And you can also focus this moment on people you know and love. So empowerments are never simply for oneself alone. Oma Hong Sarapensa, Amrita Karam Kahi. Another shout of exultation to the Dakinis. Then the text says, if you would like to perform hand offerings of Amrita, make offerings by saying the names of the various Dakinis. And sometimes you like and just you should leave your eyes closed, and if you'd like, you can just raise your hand, like you're offering that energy, that light, that amrita substance. Oma Hung, this is offered to the wisdom dakini of the Dharmakaya. Oma Hung, Dharmakaya's pure potential, the vast sea of potentiality, the actuality of potentiality. To the wisdom dakini of the Sambhogakaya dimension, Oma Hung. That's the archetypical. To the wisdom dakini of Namanakaya, Omahung, that's the dakinis in the flesh. To the only mother, Troma, the goddess of compassion, Omahung. So one's own compassion is the Troma. To the four classes of the secret dakinis, Oma Hung. To the Vijidara, Padmasambhava, Oma Hung. To the Dakini, Yashitogo, Oma Hung. To Arjun Tesan Lingpa, that's the person who brought this text, the Terma text, Oma Hung. To the Dakini Devadara, Oma Hung. To the Bodhisattvas, Oma Hung. To my compassionate root guru, Om Ahung. To the term of guardians, and that's the the guardians who protect the bringing forth of these texts into the Manakaya dimension, Om Ahung. To the oceans of beings who are all worthy of offerings, that's to everyone and everything, Om Ahung. Sense the Amrita descending and arising within the inner heart essence. Mahung, please bestow upon me at this very moment the cities of enlightened body, speech, and mind. Umkaya City, Waka City, Teta City, Abhisheka Home. Mabesheko home is the water of the empowerment, that element. Then the praise of the experience, Hong Ho, from the sublime celestial land of Ogmin, the mother comes through the power of compassion. Dark trauma, you're luminous and magnificent, wearing the charnel grounds ornaments. Charnel grounds are like the crematoriums, bodies and bones. You raise fire in your hand, dissolving the demonic. So you're actually invoking that power 
to dissolve negativity. I embrace you. Hung Ho, O white Dakinis, whose light rays pacify. O Mahung, yellow Dakinis, whose laughter is enrich and amplify. O Mahung, red Dakinis, whose passion and radiance magnetizes, pulls in. Green Dakinis, O Mahung, who release and dissolve the demonic, the greens, the luminous color, rays of healing, huh? Releasing the demonic, which is essentially ignorance or stupidity in this tradition. Dakinis who blaze wondrously, whose dances change dramatically, so lovingly, and whose laughter enriches. Um Vajrapura Sayaho, Um Vajravahari Tortakali Hari Nisa, Aveshasara, Hung. Hunka, you're the dark blue Kali, unchanging, magnificent. Ka, you're the goddess Kamoshe, another emanation. Ga, how could be there? How could be there so many emanations? So this part of the text is now describing everything as the emanation of the Dakini. So all phenomena, all experience, the most beautiful, the most horrible, everything is awakened phenomena. So awareness is awakened and all phenomena is awakened so it points to the divinity of all experience. So it takes us beyond the pairs of right and wrong, good and evil, better and best, truth and falsity. Cha, you're surrounded by a host of karma dakinis, action dakinis, who are whooping and clamoring and shouting. Cha, the fierce goddess, emanates in so many infinite forms. Huh? The fierce goddess emanates in so many infinite forms. Fierce forms. Ya, yeah, with the first portion of the potion. That's the alchemical potion that we made earlier. Ya, yeah, the whole area is filled with the light, the soft light of the full moon. You emanate like the powerful moving planet Venus moving through everything and everyone. Love. In this way, please establish all sentient beings on the path of enlightenment. All sentient beings unfolding on the path of light. Destroy crude behavior like black magic and curses Bestow the supreme empowerment of the complete stage. Release us into the open spaciousness of the all good Mother Samatabhadra. Vadra Samaya Tista Hung Soha. And this one's Saluting the heart essence in all human beings, the light. The source is in the human heart, her diam. As Bhagavad Nichinanda used to say, Hung, from the unborn, completely pure Dharmadhatu, miraculous forms arise and manifest in every possible way. Dharmadhatu again is all phenomena. 
O wisdom Dakini, protector of all beings, Vajravahari, stainless space illuminator, Pramodjul, Guru, I embrace you as my own self. I embrace you as my very self, having never separated, never separated apart. Chema, because of not recognizing that, that understanding, self-arising consciousness is the Dharmakaya, my own self-arising consciousness, your own self-arising consciousness, is the Dharmakaya. So at this point, the text is not only talking about phenomena, but your very subjectivity, that opening that you are, is the Dharmakaya. O Mother, due to thoughts I become fixated on my own self, so self-absorbed, wrapped. I am freed, I am freed by embracing the Mother, the Dharmakaya, as my own self. That's how I am freed. Because of not recognizing that all desires are self-orienting and self-arising, and that thoughts, desires, are all self-liberating as they arise in awareness. Not recognizing that, my experience is at times so murky and so bewildered. In these great texts of the Dakinis, the main description of the problem of human beings this day, is we're all a bit bewildered and bewitched. I embrace the mother, I embrace the mother Sambhogakaya as my own awareness. Because of not recognizing the change of thoughts and movements of my mind are all self-liberated in their very variety. This is saying whatever movement of thoughts and affects you have in the nature of awareness, they're being liberated through their very movement. They will appear and disappear in the field. I keep getting lost in thoughts and lost in thought, fixated. I embrace the mother as the namanakaya because I'm not recognizing that effortless, spontaneous consciousness is beyond all exertion and all striving all self-improvement. I suffer unnecessarily. I suffer unnecessarily. I suffer unnecessarily trying to attain what is already given. Because I lack realization of what is, I've been caught up in the decision of yes and no, no and yes. Because of not recognizing samsara and nirvana or in oneness, I create a split between myself and others and the very being of my own bigness. I split that off. I embrace the mother, the wisdom Dakini, because of not recognizing that freedom from grasping at reference points and attributes. I embrace the mother, wisdom Dakini, wisdom Gnosis, because of not recognizing that freedom from grasping at reference points and attributes is beyond the path. I seemingly progress in a fabricated way, which is no way at all, near the Dakini's laugh. Because of not recognizing that whatever happens is beyond arising and ceasing. Timeless awareness. I've been striving in practice, accepting and rejecting. I did not realize that the mother, 
is groundless, rootless, and without reference. I embrace the mother who, beyond, who is beyond hope and beyond despair. Not recognizing, not knowing that birth and death are beyond all fear. Realization alone is what brings true confidence. Nature itself is what benefits beings. Nature itself is what benefits beings. All apparent existence is the realm of the Dakinis. All apparent existence is the realm of the Dakinis here and now. Movements of mind, memory, and awareness are the state of primordial purity. The form of the trauma is the powerful play of compassion, the play of consciousness. The mother is great bliss, free from activity, free from striving. All sentient beings have the Dharmakaya nature. How can we awaken without practicing meditation? By the power of the truth of this text, may we realize the ultimate meaning. May everyone attain the state of the mother. You and I are the natural state of the great perfection. focus for a little while and just rest.
And so before we end our meditation, we'll focus again on people we know and love who may be having difficulties. We can also focus on our friend Mark Lawrence, um, who died about seven days ago. And this is a very important period in a person's transition. So we'll focus the light, focusing on the light. Focus on our city and all the cities. <clears throat> I mean, before we end up, I'll tell you a little story. I, I love this text very much, and the reason I chose it this morning because it really does uh, invoke and bring forth the Dharmakaya as the dark light. But also uh, a couple of us, uh, Sharon, Aaron, some, some others who were with the Karmapa uh, this Tuesday. We sent out an invitation for that for everyone. And it was really quite great, but the Karmapa is a very, very uh, great siddha. And it's the, he, and as the mythology goes, the same being reincarnates life after life as the Karmapa. So they come into the world pretty uh, strong. So, um, but also, they're, the Karmapa's uh, specialty, if you will, or their brand, is their capacity of transmitting the dark light. So when the very first Karmapa was approaching, coming to speak to the Chinese emperor many years ago, thousands of, as the Chinese emperor sees him, this vast dark light is coming towards him, and which is the dark dakini he's whirling. So there's a black hat ceremony, and we've actually played that sometimes here. But again, on, on Tuesday when he was here, that, you know, that dark light becomes very, very palpable, huh? And the capacity of transmitting that is quite amazing. But also he started giving an empowerment that day of um, one of the, the Buddhas, Aboshekha, which is the, the capacity, profound capacity within co cosmology, within the universe, within consciousness, to be undisturbed. Huh? And so he starts giving that empowerment. And it's a most beautiful day, clear, 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 super clear, and uh, actually cool. And so it's giving the empowerment, and it's connected, like many of these empowerments, and many of the deities, many of the, to the particular elements, huh? This is with the water element. So he starts talking about it. And he's about 26 years old, and he's giving this empowerment. All of a sudden, boom, the weather starts really changing. And suddenly it's lightning, pow! And this, this storm's arising, it's blowing down tent. They had one tent, but had all these great sacred objects, and the tent collapses, other tents are collapsing. The tent we're in, the takas are being blown around, the wind's coming through. And it's just a monsoon, you know, total monsoon. Anyway, it's, it's, it was a totally cool experience. And then he says, Gaga, which is like, seal it. Still. In other words, let's stop it here. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he says, well, well, we'll go now. But, so it was quite a remarkable and wonderful experience and fun. So we can rub our hands together. We can place our hands on our hearts. And we'll seal the experience in. And this particular text, Yen Chin used to always say this, Dr. Yen would say, hmm, you're at the door of Qigong, but have you entered into it yet? And he would say that a lot. It has its own provocative quality. So anyway, if you'd like to take this text, if you want to practice it, but this is a very esoteric text. It's really not easy to get, but... When these texts are given, you want to take it and practice it. So it's like, if you want to take this text, 
you can write your name down or email it to you, but the, there's a condition to these texts, and this you have to practice every day for at least a month. So you, you don't just take them and save them. You have 38 texts that you never used, and you don't have to bother with this. You know, you've, you've had the experience of whatever that is, but if you would like to get this text, then you have to practice it pr every day for a month, and that way you're honoring what's there. But you don't have to bother with it either. So thank you guys. And if you like, you can stay and meditate for a while. And then there's some refreshments upstairs. And we'll meet again next Friday. And I'll put a little music on now. And I'm going to turn the lights. We can sit and meditate also.